Hello and welcome to the Salesforce CPQ video series. In the other videos in the video series, we've been looking at very specific focus topics in Salesforce CPQ. We have deep dive into specific areas. We've looked at granular functionalities, but in today's session, we will be taking a step back. We will look at how Salesforce CPQ fits in the larger picture of what is known as the revenue cloud. My name is Prashant Ambition. I have over 17 years of work experience, predominantly in the salesforce.com area. I hold 15 salesforce.com certifications, including application architect and CPQ specialist. I'm also a trailblazer mentor. Feel free to follow me on Twitter or connect with me on LinkedIn in the details provided here. In today's session, we will look at what has happened in the year 2019 and what it means for business from a renewed importance of revenue. We will look at how Salesforce has adapted to the changes in the environment, and therefore we will come to what is revenue cloud and what are the benefits it offers. The year 2020 has been a year of immense challenge for everyone around the world and a lot of businesses had to reinvent themselves just to stay afloat. Many of them trying to manage the code to cash cycle had to start looking at multiple streams of income. Those dealing with direct sales saw a sharp decline in footfall and then had to look at different areas like indirect sales or through customer self-service portals. Many of them also started partnering with local channel agencies through which they could sell their products. All of this meant that for businesses to thrive or even just survive, they had to adapt to all the scenario which is happening around them. With all this, Salesforce.com has also built in a number of changes to align its products with what's happening in the environment today. If you paid attention to some of the releases, especially winter 21, you would have noticed some quite significant changes coming in. One of those is Salesforce billing is now decoupled from CPQ. It's a standalone entity and is now called multi-cloud billing. You can basically help manage revenue from other streams of income like B2B commerce or field service lightning, or you could connect to any homegrown systems through APIs using Salesforce billing. A very important feature you might have heard of is called customer asset lifecycle management, which gives you visibility into products your customers have bought from initial sale to the end date of a subscription or service. What this allows is you to see the assets quantity, amount or monthly recurring revenue at any point during the assets life cycle. Another concept of finance logging where finance transactions show details about the financial option performed against one of your finance records is another feature available with billing. Now all of these individually may look at as uh, different pieces of functionality, but together they are part of Salesforce's view of how the business work today. And really all this came together on November 12th, 2020, where Salesforce announced what is now known as the Salesforce Revenue Cloud. Now let us look at what is the Revenue Cloud, right? Revenue Cloud is all about helping businesses accelerate revenue growth. And not just revenue growth, it is revenue growth across any channel. It's a combined power of some of the products which Salesforce offers, supported by other products in the ecosystem. So really it builds on the power of the platform focused on specific products to really cater to accelerating revenue growth. It's a brand name for a product line and not really an individual product. Uh, what you have heard of as Salesforce CPQ and Salesforce billing, they remain product names. They are as they are. There are also no new SKUs as part of what Revenue Cloud is. What really you have to understand is Revenue Cloud is an umbrella brand for a group of products. So what is in Revenue Cloud, right? That really brings us to the question, what all products are included? There are a few lists of products which are there as part of Revenue Cloud. The first one being CPQ, then billing, advanced approvals, CPQ for partner communities, CPQ for customer communities, and CPQ and B2B Commerce Cloud Connector, which is available from Salesforce Lab as an app exchange product. All of these are predominantly around the code to cash space. Of course, advanced approvals bringing in a lot of uh, additional power from a business process perspective. 
This entire process is supported by another range of products. One is, of course, the B2B commerce itself, which offers you the storefront capability. Then the partner relationship management piece, which allows partners to be included in your sales process. Through Salesforce's acquisition of Velocity, we have a lot of accelerated growth and power from industry specific solutions. Then, of course, an integral part of Salesforce's ecosystem today is MuleSoft, which really allows the platform to be connected with various other applications in a very seamless and easy manner. Tableau being a huge acquisition, bringing immense power and forte on the analytics front. And of course, to plug in for very specific use cases, there's an ecosystem of app exchange products, which helps support the revenue cloud. Now these products in itself uh, may not mean a lot. And some of you who worked on one or more of these products may automatically realize that there are some linkages, there are some overlaps, and you can imagine how use cases of where they're working together. Let's really look at it from a business perspective front and how these products overlay on the business processes. So in today's world, what does the business want? Right? Let's talk through some of the personas and really look at uh, what happens from a business perspective. If you're a company where there's a sales rep uh, trying to sell to a customer, they work closely with the product manager. As you're working with customers and selling products, you know there may be different changes or additions to the SKUs you want to make to be able to support the customers better. So there could be around new SKUs being introduced, updated pricings being uh, uh, offered, but all this really to serve the customer better. The customer themselves may want to re really be able to see all these changes in their self-service portal. So as the sales rep and product manager have really come together with, with a list of SKUs and products available for them, we want that to be in one master space where the customer is able to see them real time. Now, once the customer sees this, uh, really what they want to do is request a quote. And it might not really be to the direct company which is offering them, but through a local partner or a, a channel they're working with very closely. Now that partner, of course, should also be able to see the same products. And not only that, they want some additional functionality. Now what the partner really wants is to be able to provide some pre-approved strategic discounts. Or they may say that we want to work with uh, the account manager on the company side and be able to get some approval driven custom pricing for the customer. And as they work with the customer, look at some of uh, how the customer's usage is, they may figure out there are some opportunities for some upsell or some related products. And they may say that, okay, let's build some contracts with the customer to see if we can um, negotiate on some pricing. With all this, really, you're providing very focused attention from a SKU offering as well as an uh, interaction and negotiation perspective with the customer being at the center of the universe. With a very happy customer, you will obviously look at someone who wants to purchase the products, uh, really make the payment quickly, and in some cases even enroll in auto pay, which is which is of course great news uh, for your finance team. And as this whole cycle works, uh, as this entire uh, cycle repeats and evolves and really caters to the needs of the end customer, the partners and the uh, account managers and sales reps want to be able to do some custom analytics and really understand what is the value they are bringing. So this is today's world. This is how different companies and partners and customers work together in, a, in an economic ecosystem, which really helps this company um, and the partners and the customers thrive in a very symbiotic manner. Now, how does this work from a technology perspective, right? How does Revenue Cloud deliver to this particular requirement? So let us relook at this picture and see where Revenue Cloud fits in. When we talk about new products and updated pricing, of course, if you've been listening to our CPQ series, you would know this is uh, really bread and butter of what Salesforce CPQ offers. You have a lot of payment functionalities and invoicing functionalities available from billing. Of course, there's a CPQ for customer community, which uh, really helps them to be able to see the products which are easily available. And Supporting that is a CPQ for partner community, which really incorporates the sales cycle from a channel perspective. We have the advanced approval processes, which give you a lot of power to be able to manage and uh, drive approvals through uh, multiple chains in a parallel front. And then, of course, uh, if you're selling to 
a business, uh, then you have the B2B commerce storefront can be connected very easily to our Salesforce CPQ product through the CPQ B2B commerce cloud connector. Now, all of these, of course, are core to the business process which we defined and all of these together is what Salesforce offers to the world today in the form of what is branded as revenue cloud. He also talked about some supporting products, right? So when you have a B2B commerce storefront, you really have a separate offering from Salesforce, which uh, caters specifically to that in a very, very easy to build storefront manner. The partner relationship management functionality within Salesforce has been there and has been enriched for uh, quite a long time now. Now, when you have customers in a specific industry and you want to provide an accelerated solution, Salesforce.com offers velocity to support revenue cloud in this area. With all these different organizations and of course related different applications, there is inadvertently a need for integration and MuleSoft is a very strong offering in this regard. Now Tableau is of course the go-to solution from Salesforce for any form of analytics and this is a very strong player in this market. And finally, to plug in any gaps which may have, uh, there's a host of solutions offered on the app exchange market for very specific use cases, which you can easily plug and play. And uh, with all this coming together, this uh, this picture is what summarizes the world of where Salesforce Revenue Cloud sits in today. Uh, again, a very contemporary solution to the challenges today's businesses face. And uh, this in a nutshell is what the customer really gets value out of with a host of solutions provided by Salesforce.com. So in this session, we went through really the bigger picture of things, I looked at CPQ from a, a broader lens of what Revenue Cloud is. I really hope you found this session and the entire video series useful. Thank you so much for listening in. Thank you, Apex Ars, for providing us this opportunity to host the session.